OK, hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Brad Rieger. I'm a principal architect at Ingrasis. Most of you probably don't know who that is, so I'm going to spend some time talking about that. And then uh, I'll talk about some of uh, some AR server work that we've been doing recently with a major partner that everyone knows. Uh, quick agenda here. So about us, we're going to talk about some modular building blocks. All of the server OEMs, ODMs are talking about modularity these days. Uh, we've been doing it for a good five or six years now. Um, we'll talk about some products in development uh, that you've all heard about already. And uh, I'll talk briefly about how the GB200 MVL72 NVIDIA has contributed some of the specs for that to the OCP community. So we'll go through some of the OCP tenants and how it applies to that contribution. And then we always have to end with come visit us. All right, so first, who is Ingrasis? Or Ingrasis, or Ingrasis, or it's about 10 different pronunciations. Um, Ingrasis. We are cutting to the the short here, we're part of Foxconn. I assume everyone knows Foxconn, it's a huge corporation. Um, found, we were founded, uh, actually let's back up. Foxconn this year is having their 50 year anniversary. So it's a major corporation in electronics manufacturing, over a million employees worldwide. Ingrasis is a wholly owned subsidiary of Foxconn um, we were founded 2002, so more than 20 years ago, and yet almost no one knows us. <laughs> um, for the first 15 years, it was all about working with OEM server customers, OEM storage customers, pretty much all behind the scenes. So we do not go out of our way to brand and market ourselves. We partner closely with our customers to develop, test, build, and ship products. Um, for the last five to 10 years, it's all been about cloud, right? We still have some OEM customers, but we have a lot of cloud customers now. Um, we are set up to work with the US-based cloud providers, um, no matter where their data centers are all over the world. Um, we have a little less than 2,000 engineers in our part of Ingrasis. I'm going to try and spend most of my time talking about Ingrasis. Um, we had an $8 billion revenue last year, so it's not small. may not be huge compared to some of our customers. Um, we have sites all over the globe, so I'm going to talk about that a little bit. We are headquartered in Taipei, Taiwan. Um, we have some de development engineers and architects in the U.S. We have sales and support in the U.S. Um, but the bulk of the development and testing is done in Taiwan. Uh, we opened a new factory in Taiwan, in Taiyun, uh, just outside of Taipei, uh, in 2011. And last year, we just got certification from the World Economic Forum for a lighthouse factory. So that's really a uh, certification for automation, and process control and sustainability. So we're really proud of that for that factory. Um, in 2015, we started building a factory in Guadalajara. For those who don't know, Guadalajara is pretty much the computer industrial center of Mexico. Um, so we started there. And just over the last two years, we've greatly ramped up our presence there. And we're now building and outfitting what we're calling a mega factory in Guadalajara. Uh, in addition to that, we have recently started factory in Vietnam. So all of this is to get major manufacturing capacity all around the globe, but outside of China, because most of our customers would prefer to have their supply chain outside of China. Uh, okay, that's my background on Ingrasis and Foxconn. Uh, you will see us and other parts of Foxconn it, use logos interchangeably. So you'll sometimes see Ingrasis, sometimes you'll see FII, which is Foxconn Industrial Internet. Sometimes you'll see Foxconn. Sometimes you'll see Hanhai Precision Industries. 
basically all the same family. We're part of that family. So hopefully that sets the stage. People know who we are now. OK, so what have we been doing? Like I said earlier, in Graces, our part of the business is all about servers and storage. Um, for a long time, we've done storage for OEM customers. Um, we are now doing lots of servers and storage for cloud customers. We think that we're unique. I'm not sure if that's true, but we can do pretty much everything from soup to nuts for our customers. Right? So we can build chassis from raw sheet metal. We can build racks. We can build PCB assemblies. We can do box build integration at the chassis level. We can do rack level integration. And we can do multi-rack cluster integration and testing. Uh, in addition to that, we also have a sister division, part of FII, that can uh, outfit and ship modular data centers in shipping containers. So if you have a need for a quick deployment, that's, this is one of the approaches. Um, and we have some edge products as well. So pretty much everything from sheet metal and PCBs all the way up to configured clusters. OK, um, for the last year or so, like many other people here in this uh, forum, we have been partnering with NVIDIA. Um, so we have worked on HGX systems. So this is the eight GPU baseboard that's usually paired with some amount of PCI switching to get IO fan out, and then some type of head node uh, to control all of that. We're a little bit unique in that we have a JBOG version of HGX, so just a bunch of GPUs. Our customers prefer to bring their own head node and cable into the JBOG, and, and that's the way they deploy in their data centers. But it's otherwise the same eight GPU baseboard, multiple generations. We started with uh, uh, the Volta generation from NVIDIA, so we're on our fourth generation, I think, right now. We have air-cooled chassis like everyone else, and about a year ago, we started on a liquid-cooled 8-GPU system uh, in a chassis meant for an ORV3 rack. So this is part of our attempt to blend into the OCP ecosystem and um, take advantage of BlindMate power and BlindMate liquid, most importantly. Uh, OK, NVIDIA MGX. This has all been announced already by them, but we're all in on the MGX architecture. So they have defined a chassis architecture with currently a 1U, 2U, and a 4U, but more importantly, they've defined bays inside the chassis, uh, and there are flexible positions for those bays, flexible widths, uh, but the concept is you can then install modules into the chassis and then cable from the inside and get all kinds of different features. We had developed our own modular servers before that. In fact, very much like DCMHS, fortunately or unfortunately, about a year before DCMHS was announced. So we have one very similar to it, but not compliant with it right now. Um, in the MGX, we have 1U, 2U, and 4U chassis in development uh, and ready for production soon. We're going to talk about those a little bit more. Um, GB200 MDL72. Everyone's talking about that. Everyone's showing it. They were first shown pretty much at um, NVIDIA's GTC this past March. We have one in our, our booth. You can go take a look at that later and talk to us about it. Um, I, I, I don't want to talk a whole lot about it because other people have already done that, and there's a lot of detail on the web that you can go read. But um, we are a close partner of NVIDIA's working on that, helping them develop it, helping them test it, and then we will be scaling our manufacturing to ship those in high volumes because there is very high demand across the industry. Uh, OK. Uh, this is a quick video on modularity. Again, we had this a while ago, but this is uh, focusing more on MGX. You have to have the CAD video, CAD animations in every presentation. 
So what is kind of uh, clever about the MGX architecture is there's a base chassis that you can hard tool and put into high volume, and then there are various ways to add extensions and adapters so that you can install that into an ORV3 rack, or you can install it into an enterprise EAA, EIA rack with you know, front and rear service. Um, and then we have a variety of HPMs or motherboards that we can mix and match, and a variety of IO modules we can mix and match to create systems for our customers. The NVL72 is modular in the fact that you have 18 of these compute trays that plug in blind mate into the rack. Nine of the switch trays are also blind mate plug into the rack, and it's all fully interconnected over this uh, cable backplane. Right, you've probably heard about the NVLink backplane. Um, so it's a very serviceable system from the data center point of view, uh, and the inside of the chassis are reasonably serviceable. There's probably room for improvement in the next generation. Okay, so NVL72. What makes the NVL important here? Uh, the eight GPU baseboards basically can tie eight, the, the memory of those eight GPUs together, and you can share that memory across them, and you can basically use that to hold your model. Uh, so the more GPUs you have, the bigger model you can fit. The fewer GPUs you have, the more you have to split that model across them. So all the buzz is on training, right? People are doing 1,000 GPUs, 10,000, 100,000, a million, crazy numbers of GPUs. Uh, and they have ways to split that software and run across all of them. NVL72, the whole trick was, how can I get as many GPUs as possible to talk NVLink over copper, not over optical, so that you can save power and save cost, um, so that the the whole idea is pack those tightly in a rack, use a cable backplane that has better characteristics than PCB, and you can now get very high throughput GPU to GPU in that NVLink domain. Then you also have NICs, east-west NICs, so you can cluster out to thousands, hundreds of thousands, and you have north-south NICs that you can use to bring data into the cluster, into the train. Um, all right. NVL2 is an optimized system that has two GPUs, two CPUs, all tightly interconnected, all on one board. So no cable backplanes, no scaling NVLink, but you can still scale out east-west to build clusters that way if you choose. Or you can just use them smaller increments to do inferencing for smaller jobs. MGX4U is a 4U server for add-in cards. These types of chassis have been around for quite some time, so there's not a whole lot new except it is a defined architecture of how to configure the base. We have all three of these products in our booth, so you can walk over and see it and talk to us about them. A uh, quick thing about OCP tenants, because this was contributed by NVIDIA to the community, and we are at the Global Summit, we'll talk about this quickly. I'm not gonna read all of this. You can read it now or later. Um, but again, the, the concepts behind the NVL72 were packing as many GPUs as possible to lead to better power efficiency for interconnect, uh, space efficiency, uh, and then the amount of power that needs to be cooled is bordering on ridiculous. <laughs> um, so it really needs to be liquid cooled to get all of that heat out of the chassis. Um, and liquid cooling, while people are nervous about it, uh, it is much more efficient than air and reduces the amount of power you use for cooling the system. All right, I'm gonna skip over all of that because I'm quickly running out of time. Um, okay, so again, we have an NVL72. It's an earlier version over in our booth. Our booth is right over this way, so you walk in the doors to the Expo Hall, we're on the right-hand side near the Innovation Center. You can come over and talk to us about the 72, about the NVL2, optimized for inference, and about our 4U systems. We also have other infrastructure to go with that. We build our own um, cooling systems, um, liquid-to-liquid -liquid CDUs, liquid-to-air sidecars. Uh, everyone's talking about those at this event, too, but 
we have the ability to do all of that, again, soup to nuts. So come talk to us. Thank you.